What's up YouTube? This is Brian with Canvas the Town coming at you with a different one today. We got some Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak and we are rocking the dirtiest hunting horn build you got around, you got cooking. So we got an elemental build here. We're using that that brand new Valstrax armor that really, really uh, does a lot for hunting horn and for pretty much everything. But let's take a look here at some of the different builds. So the main skill that you need obviously is Dragon Conversion. I'm optimized here with some really lucky uh, Curio Crafting, Curious Crafting, excuse me. And we got, you know, level three Furious. Uh, we got level three Strife. So we get these big elemental boosts. So how that works is Furious boosts your elemental resistance to plus 20 for everything at level um, level three and then strife boosts everything by its 15 percent and then when you lose enough health you're at i believe 20 percent of a boost to element and affinity uh, i could be wrong uh, you can feel free to let me know in the comments if there's something else i missed i know you get the infinite stamina but that doesn't really matter for us uh, playing hunting horn the main thing is we're trying to boost elemental damage so that's why we have um these elemental resist decos here let's take a look at it on the decos so we have um you know here are these augments right they're really lucky augments you're probably watching this like bro how am i going to get these augments but the good news is um if you're like me uh, and you haven't been grinding this game. It gives you a pretty good excuse to grind the game if you've been enjoying the hunting horn. As the damage is pretty outrageous. Um, and even if you don't throw in, like I'm also using Dereliction. I haven't even mentioned that yet. We got level 2 Dereliction with the Archfiend armor. You know, we got the, the three pieces of Valstrax are really the main key here. And Furious is really nice. I have a very lucky augment here where I have uh, level 2 Furious. Um, the Fortify and Crit Draw don't matter so much. Although the Fortify is definitely nice. I'm not going to lie to you. When I die, I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy that I got that. But um, the really important thing here, um, above all else, you know, having, having Furious is definitely not negotiable. Um, you want to have uh, level 3 Furious. So... We're going for that. Strife is a little secondary. If you can get level 1 or level 2 Strife, you'll be okay. But level 3 is going to give you the biggest payoff. Dereliction is secondary here. So the main priority is definitely having the three pieces of Valstrax and boosting your element as much as possible. So let's talk a little bit about boosting your element, okay? So let's eat a meal here. So if you take a look at some of these uh, Dango... Now, depending on your stats, you're going to want to eat two or three of these Dango, uh, Dongo, however you say it. Um, you're going to want to eat two or three of these. So the first one at level four, if you're using the hopping skewers, which you want to be, um, at level four, 
you're going to get a boost of plus 20. So for my build, I need for the most, uh, I think I need plus 20 ice resistance the most. And then the plus 15 for water is good for me. Now, if your build still needs different uh, resistances, you can get a plus 8 on one of these. So that's an option you have if your augments haven't blessed you and you need to up your elemental um, your elemental resistance. I like to use Dango Feet if I'm playing uh, co-op. You know, it's a free flinch free, so you don't have to slot for it. Because uh, as I'm about to show you, this is a very skill hungry build. And putting in flinch free is actually kind of difficult with all of these really awesome level 1 jewels that you are going to want. So, let's take a look here. Uh, yeah, I would I would definitely recommend Dango Feet. I would also recommend using even like Dango Defender can't hurt. You know, reducing damage if you're hit. Um, there's also, what's it called? Really good one. Uh, Booster, I don't know how good Booster is at level 1, but Moxie is really good. Moxie is really good. So running Moxie would be nice. And then we're going to head on over. I'll meet you over in the training area. And we're going to check out how this works. Alright, we're here in the training area. Let's take a look at our elemental resistances. So, everything is above 15. That's the important part. Because when we're in the blue scroll, we can do enough attacks here. So I always start with the Silkbind Shockwave. Um, it's good to get self-improvement up ASAP. If you're playing in co-op, you might want to put down a bead of resonance so that if your horn doesn't have attack up, you're playing attack up right there for the whole team. Um, and then we just want to get our hits. We actually already have enough hits. You can see that shield right up on the top corner with the four different colors, the red, the blue, the yellow, the green, with the blue arrow. And now look at our resistances. Everything, our lowest one is 31. And thanks to that Furious, level 3, we get to put all of this at 50, okay? And now we'll go ahead and switch to the red scroll. And our attack, our elemental attack is 218 without even getting our two extra Curio um, who are eating us right now from that level 2 dereliction, which I believe will give us another plus 8 at level 2. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, feel free. There's definitely a lot of stats going on here um, that make it difficult. Sometimes I screw. I screw up some numbers and stuff. So please, please let me know or let the people know in the chat. So right now I'm using for my switch skills the, the crush attack and the performance is definitely good. The melodic slap. I know that I see speedrunners not using this, but um, I just... I like, I like the movement options that these two give you uh, versus the other two that are very much focused on um, maximum damage, but I'm really just going for the elemental damage. So let's talk about the skills. Um, right now I'm running Razor Sharp, um, and as you notice this entire time I have still been in purple sharpness with only level 2 handicraft on the Narwa Electric Horn. So. I find this is a pretty valuable skill, especially if you're doing those endgame hunts. By the time they leave, you'll have maybe just broken into y to white, or if you are lucky with RNG. Um, like, look at this, we're still in purple. We've been in purple this entire time. Um, I believe the reason that this is working so well for the Hunting Horn, Razor Sharp Level 3, is because these shockwaves don't consume sharpness anyway um but they it may also be okay we finally broke sharpness there but it's been uh yeah i've been recording this part for about three minutes so i've been attacking for about two and a half minutes in purple which is pretty valuable it's pretty valuable um that's pretty much all you need for most encounters you know you're also going to get a wyvern ride stuff like that chances to sharpen up um, protective polish and speed sharpening is also a good alternative. I just, uh, it's a very skill hungry build. So let's talk about those skills. I'm walking over here. So we'll go through all of the sets, but 
right now let's start with the horn so for all of them i have them augmented to the max for title update four which gives us that juicy extra sharpness and element bonus and attack um, attack bonus which is really nice um, a good quality of life that they added to make the augments feel a lot more worthy in my opinion so we have the uh, level 2 for the plus 45 instead of getting the level 3 jewel. So I did some testing here and I found that when you do get a little bit of increased damage, elemental damage, it's not really worth it. Because, I mean, like, let's take a look at some monsters as an example. So what I'm talking about, because I'm just kind of talking here, you probably aren't following. Sorry about that. We got a level, th for a level 3 rampage slot, you can have this, the Elembane, ex the element exploit that is a rampage skill. Now, this only works if their weakness is above 25. Now, if you're an amazing hunting horn player, and you're fighting someone, you're only hitting their head. Let's take a look. In this case, it would do a little more damage, right, against Azuchi. And Baggy, it would too. But any of these guys, like, look, already, Kulu Yaku, you get nothing. You get zero value out of that decoration. So you're better off just boosting your element, um, raw, your raw element, rather than getting the level 3 decoration slot upgrade and losing out on that extra raw element you could pump into your weapon. Um, so like, yeah, here you'll do increased damage with ice, right? It has to be over 25. So this is only the four leg where you would do increased damage and the upper half you do increased damage. But, um, my point that I'm trying to make here is that I'm just going for more viable across the board, across all the different monsters, um, instead of optimizing and only using element when they're extremely weak. So before title update four, before having dragon conversion i would definitely say you don't need you know you, you don't need to run element against every monster in fact you shouldn't run element against every monster because you just don't do that much damage uh if they're not weak enough right but now that your element is so sky high like you know this horn has 219 right now um they're all in the 200s i you know 250 I believe the ice horn maxes out at. Um, let me this this loadout's all messed up. Let me go back. So let's start at the top here. Let's start with the dragon one. Let's take a look at the decorations. So I run an element exploit at level one. It's the highest value. I am running level three here because I had the slots for it. Because we were talking about razor sharp before, but this thing is just pure white sharpness. So we don't have to worry about no razor sharp or you know any kind of management in that regard uh again we have the level two slot instead of the upgrade and we have that 96 raw element with our augments same exact augments across the board we always max our elemental attack right um here i'm running a little divine protection uh, divine blessing um so these are greedy sets right and when you're building you might say hold up i don't need element exploit three as much as I need, you know, X skill. Maybe you want to slot, um, I don't know, something else. You want Divine Blessing level 3 instead. Or you want to get Intrepid Heart at level 2. Which is, this is a very valuable skill for any weapon. Um, to have as a level 1 jewel is really good. Um, it was never worth a whole armor piece. So this is a really good addition. Um, of course, I've slotted in my Dragon... However, I could here. I was using two dragon jewels and one level one dragon jewel. You have all the options in the world. Maxing out um, element exploit um, is secondary to maxing out burst, in my opinion. Because element exploit only works at hit zones above 20. So there is some monsters where you just get zero value out of this skill. Um, so if you're really crazy uh, and want to be meticulous for each monster, you could make a set for each one and not include element exploit if it's not worth it and you could just run something else to boost your attack in another way you know um you can ditch dereliction you don't need dereliction i like to really min max and do big damage but like you don't need the constant health drain 
Um, this is only adding, I believe it's like 20, 20 or 25 extra element. So it's not like the end of the world if you take this off the set and replace it with some quality of life um, or maybe boost in another way. The main skill I would recommend against or skills is actually critical skills. So you don't really need crit skills for this build because uh, your shockwaves can never crit. They cannot crit. So your regular attacks can crit, like this could crit, right? All of those two hits can crit, but after I activate Silkbind Shockwave, that can crit, but those those hits afterwards cannot crit. All of those Shockwave hits do set damage based on your element um, versus their hit zone, right? Math, math, math. You get the idea. So basically, building... You know, you don't want to add weakness exploit. It's not doing anything for your element damage. This is element focused. If you're making a raw build, of course you want weakness exploit. Um, and you're not really worried about maximizing the damage from the shockwaves. But yeah, when you're playing, you're, you're, you're keeping the shockwave up at all times. Um, if this, the horn has attack up already, like this one, you can go ahead and use Sonic Bloom instead, but I pretty much never use Sonic Bloom because I'm always going for um, spamming those shockwaves. That's the most effective, you know, you're going to get the fastest clear times um, if that's what you're doing and if that's what you care about. So, yeah, any other important skills? So the main thing that I didn't mention here with the element resistances is that your augments will screw this up. Like, you see I have negative 7 fire resistance, negative 3 dragon resistance, um, you know, negative 7 thunder here as well. Um, and then I have some that are very lucky. So, like, I have some that have absolutely no negative effects. Like, this one is just strife and a plus 1 of defense. Or this, which is furious and a plus one of defense. So these were regular, uh, like, um, RNG rolls. Um, if you use the skills plus, you're always going to get a negative element. So you have to keep that in mind. As you can see, I'm running the thunder resistance. I'm running fire resistance. And I'm running dragon resistance is built into one of these pieces. I believe it is this one. There it is. Yeah, so this one automatically gives you that plus 20 to dragon resistance. So that's why I ate ice and water like I showed you before. But that may or may not be, uh, you know, what you need. Because your augments are going to be different. Your resistance, your overall resistance is therefore going to be different. So I needed to eat, you know, if we look at the status, Dango Ice Resistance and Dango Water Resistance. And just to show you again, that puts all my stats above 15. So that's all you need to think about when you're building. Um, how can you mix and match a combination of resistances in your skills to uh resistances built into your set and how do you get everything above 15 so that you can go to the blue scroll you can do your 30 attacks or so that it needs and you can get your plus 15 to everything and then you can switch to the red scroll um again having furious level three and getting to 50 on everything and getting that maximum boost right so here we are everything's above switch my scroll and i'm doing 243 after we factor in my burst right um and then of course strife keeps boosting that i mean you really go into infinity and beyond kind of like straight up cheese the whole game with this kind of build and this really applies beyond hunting horn Hunting Horn's a really good candidate because you don't, you're not hungry for other skills. I'm not even running Horn Maestro, but it would be, I believe, a little DPS increase if you wanted to slot that in somewhere. Um, my Talisman is also pretty good. Let's take a look, a little closer look at the Talisman. I'm running just Wirebug Whisperer. I got a level 3 one with a level 3 slot and a level 2 slot. Affinity Sliding is not doing anything for me, but it's there. Uh, I like Blood Rite. It's a nice quality of life skill. Let's just talk about all the skills real quick from top to bottom. So dragon attack, this is going to be any elemental attack, right? Like I said, I'm running those three elemental resistances based on um, my 
curious crafting results and just trying to get all my elemental resistances above 15. And then I'm running stun resistance. Uh, I tried to run stun resistance on all the builds. Some of them don't have it. Some of them have stun resistance on the horn. So you don't have to worry about running stun resistance as a skill. Um, Wirebug Rissler is built into my talisman. This isn't too insane of a talisman. Like, it's a nice talisman. It's not like this, like, you know, attack boost 4, wax 2, 3 slot talisman that you're never going to get. Like, you're going to get something similar to this. And if it can just have three skills of a level 2 slash level 4 deco, like Wirebug Whisperer that you need in your set. Like, for example, if you had, um, you know, a Divine Blessing Talisman, and it also had a 3-slot and a 2-slot, or 2-2 two two slots. You don't need the Blood right. I like the Blood right. It's actually an overall decrease in DPS with Blood right because you start to um, soak up your own... You know, you start to lose damage from Strife that way, but I like to not die. <laughs> you know, I'm always... I'm not, like, the world's best player, so if I don't get that health back, I'll be dying. So... Yeah, what, like I said, Fortify is nice quality of life. We're starting in the top, though. We got Sun, we got Wirebug, Furious, level 3 for the plus 20 element resistance and on the red scroll. Right? The infinite stamina in blue is whatever. We don't care about that. Um, element exploit level 3 it could really be level 1. Okay? You, can, you don't have to have level 3. And like I said, for some monsters, you don't need to have the skill at all. Although I don't usually take it off. And then we have Burst level 3. This is a very high value for increasing your element. I believe it's something like plus 18 at level 3 uh, when you're doing your big multi-hit combos, which you do. This like the whole weapon, so it's super valuable to get at level 3 if you can. Dragon Conversion, built into Valstrax, and is a must, is the main thing. Strife is really nice um, at level 3. It could also be level 2 or level 1. Um, if your augments aren't this lucky, uh, you'll be okay. And, you, you know, it's a long grind to 220 unless you've been playing like crazy um, for the last, you know, year or so that Sunbreak has been out. So, um, you know, grind your way up. You'll get these augments eventually. Um, there's no way to cheese them anymore. You know, you just do the, do the quests and move the table along. And, you know, if you find something you need but you're augmenting on the wrong piece, you can always reset your game if you have an autosave off. So I recommend that when you're augmenting. Attack boost, latent power, stamina surge, divine blessing. Um, no, let's stop at attack boost, latent power, stamina surge. These are all just coming from the you know the armor sets. They don't mean anything really. We're not building for it. Divine blessing is in there because we like to not die sometimes. Uh, dereliction because we do like to die sometimes, and that increased uh, element attack is nice. Resentment is built in. We don't really care. It would be nice to boost that if you care about boosting your raw. Crit draw is uh, just random from our augment uh, that we don't really care. Affinity, we don't really care. Evade Extender level 1. I can't play without this skill. It's built into the Holy Ire Hakama. So this is a really valuable piece for this set in particular. You know, getting that Furious, two levels of Furious, you know, and only sacrificing one level of Dereliction is definitely worth it i think um because you're everything's over 200 you're getting big boost from 15 percent versus five more raw damage from level three dereliction and you're getting that evade extender it comes with level two so you can augment it down hopefully like me and land with furious and maybe even some better skills than fortify and crit draw and uh yeah uh, adrenaline rush again is a random augment Blood Ride is nice, not necessity, but it's a nice quality of life. You're going to be grinding for a while before you get that if your anomalies, anomaly isn't above 180 right now. And then Intrepid Heart as well, you'll be grinding for a while. I think this one might be level 200, but a really nice quality of life. Uh, could be swapped for any other number of quality of life skills that you may want. Of course, um, if we go through all the other ones real quick... The only things that I'm not talking about uh, that should be mentioned that's very important is stuff like Kushala Blessing for your Ice and Water sets. For your Fire set, you want the Teostra Blessing at level 2. Uh, Dragon and Ice, uh, I'm sorry, Water and Ice at level 2. Uh, Dragon, there's nothing else you can really do. You could run the, um, the Dragon Heart skill and then it's like a whole different set at that point because um, you don't need to worry about resistances at all. 
But like the way that the hunting horns work, like you're always getting health back, and then if you're doing curio crafting and stuff, it's not, um, it, you're not, you're gonna end up with ways to get your health above eighty percent, and you just, you know, you're fighting, you're fighting these monsters that are built in to heal you as you hit them. I don't think it's a very good skill, but uh, yeah, so that's the basics of it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you guys want more content like this on Monster Hunter on some builds. And maybe some streams with the community. Let me know. We can do some hunts. And uh, it's always blessed. Alright. Enjoy everybody. Peace out.